Namaskar, Khambagani people. My name is Amrita Tiwani and I'm going to teach you biology for class 9 to 12 and life sciences subject for undergrad, grad and med school. So today I'm going to cover the first topic of class 9 that is fundamental of life which is self. So let's discuss this topic. The fundamental of life which is self. Now, this topic is very much common in CDSC as well as in IGCSE Board UK. Before discussing the topic in detail, we are going to cover the contents first. So, like, we should look at the contents. The first content that we are going to discuss, the first topic of the content is introduction. Which means we discuss like what is cell, is it cell really important to us, how is it, does it look like and etc. Second is discovery which means who discovered cell, was the cell being discovered in the very first time or it took a lot of time for its discovery. So discovery of cell. Third is we are going to discuss the difference between unicellular and multicellular organisms. Next we are going to discuss is about the cell structures. Which means, what are the internal structures of cell, different organs of the cell? Yes, the, all the cells do have organs and we are going to discuss them in detail. The next thing we will discuss is about the difference between animal and plant cell. And the last thing that we will discuss over here is the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic organisms. So this is the content of the first topic which is the fundamental of life that is cell. The first content is introduction of cell, second is discovery of cell, third is difference between unicellular and multicellular cell organisms, third is, fourth is cell structure which means the internal structures of the cell, next is difference between the animal and the plant cell and the last topic that we will discover over here is the difference between the eukaryotic and the prokaryotic organisms. Now moving ahead for the first topic that is the introduction. of cell. But before studying the introduction of cell, which means first thing we need to know what is cell. But before that, a very important thing that what is every living organism, all the non-living organisms are made up of cell, then the answer is no. Not, no living, only living organisms are made up of cells, not the non-living organisms. Living organisms like animals, plants, even the smallest microorganisms, they are made up of cells. So, now what is cell? So, cell is basically a basic structural and functional unit of life. When I say structural and functional, which means cells make up the structure of your body, like the human body. If you just see, if you just look at the humans, we all have the same structure. 
Why is it so? Because the structure of the cells which are responsible for the building of the human body, they are same. If we just look at the dogs, they have they look same because the cells are responsible for their makeup is same. Now, talking about the functional unit, then when I say functional unit, see the cells also perform certain functions like pumping of blood, generating energy, digestion of food, and many other things. So on the other hand, cells are also available in different shape, different size, and different designs. And all these things are responsible for different different functions of the cell. So what we have discussed so far in terms of introduction is first thing that is every living organism is made up of cell. Every living organism is made up of cell. Second, cell is the basic structural and functional unit. Third, cell can be of different shape. size and design. So, so far we have discussed three things in terms of introduction. That is, every living organism is made up of cell. Cell is a basic structural and functional unit of cell. And third, that each and every cell has different shape, different size and different design. And according to that, their functions are being decided. Now, moving ahead to the next topic, that is the second topic of the content, that is discovery of cell. Now, if I just ask you, like, was a cell being discovered in the very first time? No, not all the structures. Because the time the cell was being discovered, it is actually, the, the science or the technology was not that much advanced. Like we have it right now. Like we have the microscope as big as the zoom, or might be as small as uh, the tip of a pencil. Here are certain microscopes there, which are being there. So, Second topic is discovery of cell. Now, who discovered cell? A very common question, and that comes up in class 8th only. But still, the cell was being discovered by an English scientist, and his name was Robert Hooke. And he discovered the cell in the, in the year 1665. So, who discovered cell? Robert Hooke. And it was 1665. So he was a person responsible for the discovery of the cell. But did he able to see different things in the cell, which means different structures of the cell? No, he was not able to. Reason behind is that because the time he discovered the cell, the microscope was not advanced. So what he did, he actually discovered cell into the dead part of a plant, which is called as cork which is a dead part of the plant. Now you will say, what this cork is? Fine, it has been extracted from the dead part of the plant. But I hope you all have, must have seen this kind of a structure fitted into the glass bottle. This is the cap of the certain glass bottles. This is called the cork, the wooden part which is being used as a cap. So what he did, he took a very thin slice, I just mark it down, a very thin slice of this cork. This is quite thick, but it was actually very thin. And he observed that thin slice under the microscope that was designed by none other than by the Robert Hooke himself. So he, des he designed a very simple microscope with the help of which he could able to see the layer of that cork, a very thin layer of the cork under the microscope. And what he discovered, what he discovered, what he actually seen, he see, he had seen these structures.
So he, he actually had seen this whole structure. So when he had seen this structure, he called it as the honeycomb. He gave the term that it looks like a honeycomb and each of these portions or compartments looks like a cell. So he gave the term cell for it. So this looks like a honeycomb. And this, he called them, these compartments as cells. Okay, now, the term cell is actually not an English word, but it is a Latin word. The meaning of cell is, it is a Latin word, and its meaning is little rooms. So he gave the term cell, which was Latin word, and the name what was it? Little room. Now, so what we have studied so far in this one, that the cell was discovered by the Robert Hooke in the year 1665. He observed the cell in a dead part of a plant, which was cork. Cork is nothing but a cap that is being fitted into the glass bottles. You might have seen somewhere. And when he cut it a very thin slice, which is this one, a very thin slice out of which, so he would be able to see this structure under his microscope, which was designed by the Robert Hooke. And he, he told, he said that it looks like a honeycomb. And the, each of these compartments have the walls, these walls. So they, he called it as cells. If you just look at this structure, the structure is quite similar to the brick that we use to build our houses. Okay, so he, he called them as bricks, as compartments, as cells. And he coined the term cell for it. Now cell is not an English word, but instead of that, it's a Latin word. The meaning of the cell in English is little rooms. Okay, so moving ahead in the discovery, like the robot who discovered the cell in the dead part of the plant, but what about the living organisms? Now, a very important thing that I would like to tell you that, because at that time when the robot who discovered the cell, which was the year 1665, there was no internet, there was no computers, so definitely he has to write his findings somewhere, otherwise that would have been lost in the history. So he wrote a whole book for it where he jotted down all his findings, all his research and he, the book is termed to be as my, Micrographia. This is the name of the book which was being written by the Robert Hooke in which all his findings were jotted down. Now, because it was the year 1665, so later on in the year 1674, Another scientist came in and his name was Anton von Leeuwenhoek in the year 1674. Because Robert, Robert Hooke actually discovered the cells in the dead organisms. So there was a curiosity that developed among the scientists, especially among the rock, Anton von Leeuwenhoek, that whether the cells are also the basic or the structure and function unit or you can say because it was not known at that time so he was curious to know that whether these cells are also present in the living organisms so what he did he discovered the living cells in the pond water so Anton von Leeuwenhoek is responsible for the discovery of cells discovery of cells in living organisms. In living organisms. And he did it in the pond water. Now, later on, because at this time, till this time, the science was not developed, microscopes were not developed. So because of that, no none of the scientists, like neither the Anton von Leeuwenhoek nor the Robert Hooke, could able to see inside the cell. They were only able to see outside the cell, like how the cells look like. They are the small, small units. Now, later, uh, it took approximately 150 years for the scientists to look inside the cell, which means it took 150 years for the technology to develop that much, as well as more powerful microscope came in. So in the year, so two scientists, that is, friends for, 
in the year 1803 and another scientist Robert Brown in the year 1830 they both they both could able to look inside the cell and you know what they discovered they discovered nucleus So nucleus was discovered by Fred Bohr in 1803 and Robert Brown in 1831. Now, after that, another scientist came and his name was Perkinson. And he discovered a very fluid-like substance. Okay, so the year for the first gram was 1839. Just after Robert Brown, like eight years after Robert Brown, Perkinson did another study on cell and he discovered a fluid like substance inside the cell and he coined the term protoplasm for it and nowadays we call it as cytoplasm so he discovered fluid like substance and called it as called as Protoplasm. Nowadays we know it as cytoplasm. It is the same thing. Now, so far what we have discussed, we have discovered who discovered cell, who discovered the cell in the living organism, such as the ending one living hawk in the year 1674, and he discovered the cells in the living organisms in the pond water. Later, Franz Bohr in 1803 and Robert Brown in 1831. They discovered the nucleus because the technology was more developed, the, the, the instruments that they were using, the microscope was more developed and could e easily able to see inside the cell. In the year 1839, Perkinson, another scientist, he came in and he studied more about the cell. And what he saw, he saw a fluid-like substance which is present inside the cell and coined the term protoplasm for it. The protoplasm is nothing but the cytoplasm that we call it now. So class, this is all for today and the next part we're gonna cover in the next class. Please like, subscribe and share my channel and if there is any comment, suggestion or question, you can drop down in the comment box below. Thank you, bye.